Okay, so I'm not Bootsy Collins. One, you know, one, you know. <laughs> and I'm not Bernard Edwards. And I'm definitely not Esty Heim. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use the bass to find out how much low frequency energy you can filter out before you start to notice. One thing you might ask is why am I not using a virtual instrument bass? Surely that's going to be easier. Well, the fact is I've got a bass and I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to play a very simple bass passage and we're going to hear it many times. So you might get a bit fed up with it, but it's important to be able to focus on the, uh, the actual sound that we're getting from it, not so much the notes. So here we go, recording a, a bass passage. Here we go, just a little scale. And once more for luck. OK, so I'm going to loop that and we'll use that as the raw material for the filtering tests. So going back to Pro Tools, let's just have a look at uh, this section here because I think that was the, the better version. OK, that'll do nicely. So we'll just uh, trim it there and uh, let's trim it just there and we'll see where we get to. So you can do this in any digital audio workstation software. I'm using Pro Tools, but you don't have to use Pro Tools. You can use whichever software you like. So let's try just looping this and um, see whether it does loop. Okay, there's a little click somewhere in it. I suspect it's just at the end. I'm going to have to take that out because it's just going to get... Um, It's just going to get more and more irritating if we have to listen to it over and over again. I put a little bit of a fade, a f -f fade there. Okay, let's listen again. Excellent. That's exactly what I want. So let's um, let's take the loop off, and what I'm going to do is duplicate it a few times. So I've got about thirty seconds, and that will be easily enough for what I want. So let's just listen to that, just make sure it's okay. That's fine. So we're going to the plugins now. So I've got the uh, my tuner plugin there. Let's just have a look, quick look at that because it's always a good idea to tune your instrument before you start doing anything. So we don't need that. And what I'm going to do is take it away and I'm going to put in a standard EQ. It's going to be the Pro Tools standard EQ, but once again, you can use any EQ, any decent EQ plugin, probably the one that came with your digital audio workstation. I'm going to take away the bands that I'm not going to use, and I'm going to put in the band that I am going to use. So it's only this band here, which, as you can see, is a high pass filter. I'm just going to turn my own monitoring level up a bit. Okay. And a high pass filter, it passes the high frequencies and it cuts the low frequencies. I'm going to use the steepest slope that we have in this filter, which is 24 decibels per octave. So that's going to make the most difference. And uh, what I think I'll do is I'll go to the automation and I'll automate the high pass frequency. That's the cutoff frequency. So once again, in your own digital audio workstation, you will have the controls to do this. Let me just get rid of this little window pane here. Uh, it's just distracting me. So there we go. I can play it through again. Okay, that's nice. And here, instead of looking at the waveform, I'm going to look at the high pass frequency. So at the moment, we've got this set at the lowest it can be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this up to, I think about, I've got to think about people who listen on their laptop speakers as well. So I'm going to take it up to 300, about 300 hertz, it doesn't have to be precise. 
There we go, we're just over 300 hertz. So what I want you to listen to is when do you first notice any loss of low frequency? Bear in mind that the lowest frequency of the bass guitar, the bottom E, which I did include in that, is about, th is about 42 hertz. So at that point, you definitely should start to hear a difference. So keep your eye on the frequency readout here and that will give you an idea of where we are in this. So let's have a go and see what it sounds like. Okay, you should have heard something. If you didn't hear any difference, then you need to be listening on a better system, uh, bigger speakers, better quality headphones. You must have heard something. So I'm listening on my uh, Yamaha NS10M monitors. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to say approximately when I just about think I can hear a difference. And I'm going to say again, when I can, I'm certain I can hear a, a difference. So listen for that yourself, when you just think you can hear a difference and when you're certain you can hear a difference. And it's almost certainly down to your monitoring system and not your ears. So let's go back again and let's just see where this happens. Okay, that, that I can just... Oh yeah, now, now, definitely. <laughs> I should have made a note of where those frequencies were, but somewhere around here is where I can just about hear a difference. Yeah, I'm getting light. Yeah, definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I'm going to do it a slightly different way, and I'm going to just rummage around and get my headphones. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves for a while while I find my headphones. Okay, so this is my wondrous pair of Sony CD1700 headphones, which are my favourite headphones. I've got, um, I think I've got about three uh, sets. So I'm going to do the same thing now, and I'm going to judge when I can just about think I'm hearing a difference, and when I'm certain I can hear a difference. So here we go again. Starting to hear it now. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's really light now. <laughs> okay, so what this shows is that my headphones have a better bass response than my Yamaha NS10, NS10M speakers. And you would absolutely expect that. So where your personal point of um, experience is, where you start to hear the difference, what that's telling you that any frequency below that, you can't hear it. So when you're mixing, you're not hearing those frequencies. So this is one reason why you should try out your mix on as many different systems as possible, including systems where you can really hear those low frequencies. Or have your mix mastered, because the mastering engineer will certainly have speakers where he can, he or she can hear the uh, very lowest frequencies. So that's it. Bass, how high can you go? I think that's it. To be honest, I think that's it.